Hey there, internet friend. Would you like to see how I turned this into this? Of course you do. Stick around and check it out. And if you'd like to see how I prepared this board to paint on it, there's a card up there. Hit that and then come back and watch this. All right, bye. All right, now that that is all prepared, it's dried nicely with no funky glue coming out of it. I hit it with some duct tape to get all the cat hair off. It's like it came pre-fuzzed or something because uh, the cat's not allowed in here, but you know, what are you gonna do? So we've got an eight by 10 cradled pine board with some black velvet applique. And I have been tasked by my good friend, Michael Spreadman of Two Old Guy Games. He uh, reached out on Twitter, he tagged me on Twitter and said that he uh, would think it would be interesting to see this artwork, which is the cover of the Precipice of Corruption DCC module from Breaker Press Games, if he saw that in kind of like a black velvet style, since I'm so uh, keen on doing that sort of thing. And I said, you know what, we'll do it. So uh, Nick Baran, the uh, owner over there at, uh, at uh, Breaker Press Games, he said, yeah, I'd love to see it. The original artist of this cover is a really talented kind of heavy metal artist named Matt Stryker. You can check him out at Bargain Bin Blasphemy on the Instagrams. So go check out his artwork. He made this original artwork, which is the cover for the DCC compatible Precipice of Corruption. And I thought just for fun, obviously this isn't gonna be available in my store or anything like that, but I thought just for fun I would uh, give it a shot at, at Michael's request. So I'm opening up this brand new package. You know, I have, you know how I do. I really just kind of have to mess around with everything. I'm opening up this brand new package of Pentel oil pastels. Like I, I bought these. I've got an Amazon wish list that I just call the FO, wait, the FAFO wish list, which is my fuck around and find out. So if I if I think of an art, the project that I want to do or an art supply that I should maybe pick up sometime, I chuck it in there and then eventually, usually a little bit of whiskey powered. We got some art juice going here, a little bullet rye. I go and uh, purchase those things. But without further ado, let's, I'm gonna draw my rendition of this creepy looking uh, cavern entrance. I assume that's what it is. I haven't read the module, but you should go pick it up at breakerpress.storeenvy.com. You can buy this module for yourself and support an independent game designer. Who doesn't love that? I'm rambling. All right, so to start this here shenanigans off, I think I'm gonna take a nice light gray color, get this box out of the way so I got a little bit more table space. And I'm just going to kind of quickly dab in the biggest shapes that I kind of see here, which would be these broken sort of horns above the uh, main entrance. Now this was uh, precipitated by Nick ordering t-shirts with this artwork and then posting it on Twitter and Michael saw that and said that he'd like to see a black velvet version. So you can get that t-shirt also at that Store Envy store, breakerpress.storeenvy.com. I can tell already that I'm not really doing this justice but that's the magic of art. <laughs> you just kinda F-O, F-A-F-O, right? And I'm just kind of trying to get the shapes in here. Now the, uh, the artwork that I saw originally was just in black and white. It was a uh, you know white ink on a black t-shirt on the Twitters. But if you go to the Breaker Press website, you can see this baby in full color, all its glory. Kind of a, an autumn scene with this abandoned trail leading up to this very spooky, spooky looking den of corruption. I already feel like I'm not really doing this justice, but that's kind of how art starts out sometimes. So my apologies to Matt Stryker if you're watching this. Your artwork's incredible, man. All right, so that's kind of the, the gist of what I've got going on. 
Now, let's kind of do the background. So we've got different layers of trees happening. We're just gonna draw them out of the background. Now, I've never worked. You, you may have seen my other video where I did uh, dry pastels, soft pastels on velvet, just to see how it works, see if I could. <laughs> and uh, yeah, mixed, mixed results. These are oil pastels. I've never done them uh, on velvet, and I'm not even sure if I've ever done them at all. <laughs> so, you know how we do, friends. Half the art is just messing around. I think when I'm done with this, I will uh, gift it to my friends at Breaker Press Games, and they can do with it as they wish. Maybe they'll be a fun giveaway, or something that Nick could just enjoy himself. He's a great guy. I've got a, had the pleasure of playing DCC with Nick and Mike and a couple of the other, guy, other people. Alright, so now we've got kind of this middle ground. I gotta be honest folks, I don't really know where this is going. I just kind of wanted to get the background in before I get too crazy on that skull in the middle. As you can see the original art just kind of has layers and layers and layers of foliage going back there. A couple dead trees off to the side and a pathway of dead leaves appropriately leading up to the maw of this thing. So this is pretty uh, pretty tame right now, but we're gonna spice it up. This is like an ASMR channel you now for the idiot, <laughs> idiot knocking on pine board <laughs> ASMR channel. All right, it's got some weird little nubbies on there. I don't have my canned air. Let me retrieve it. I thought I had it. Didn't seem to do much. All right, now let's get weird with this. I think maybe some blue here in the middle, kind of accentuate the more solid shape of this cavernous skull. I thought maybe I'll be able to blend these together with my fingers. I think I've seen people do that with oil crepas. You know, I, I might have used this in college. Maybe this medium. I've got a Bachelor of Fine Arts from the University of Wisconsin, Milwaukee. So a lot of general <laughs> type art supplies. Back in the days before the digital art, I remember walking into the computer lab in, uh, boy, it had to be 1993, I suppose. I graduated high school in 92. And I walked into the computer lab and, and someone had used a scanner to scan a painting of some fruit or something like a cornucopia kind of thing and I saw it on the computer and it was the I'd, I'd never even encountered a scanner before in my life and I was immediately stricken with imposter syndrome <laughs> because I thought that it was digital art I thought that someone had painted that on the computer not knowing that you could use the computer you know to scan things in 
and I just thought, well, why am I even trying? Like it wasn't like normally maybe someone would be inspired, like, wow, I want to be that good too. But I was just immediately defeated. I, I just looked at that and went, Boy, why am I even trying? Uh, <laughs> luckily, uh, eventually I figured out that it was a scan of an actual painting. But you know, nowadays, someone could make something that cool directly on the computer. I like to say, you know what, little little uh, Jason, I could do that now. I could make something awesome on the computer, and it would look okay. But that's uh, yeah, a memory of one of my first days of college, just immediately being defeated. <laughs> All right. I got this kind of shape going on. Uh, we're gonna do some brown tones, I think. Some russet here in the land leading up to it. Just give it a fun little kind of contour there. Tell you what, Matt Stryker has absolutely nothing to worry about. Oh boy. Alright. So, we got all that going on. It looks like in the back of the temple's throat, looks like maybe there's another exit. Like, if you, if you could pass right through this thing and uh, find some kind of redemption on the far side. So, I'm gonna put that in here. And I think this is really where my lack of experience is <laughs> showing through with these uh, oil pastels. I'm gonna cheat and throw in some black. You know, the whole point of kind of black velvet art is retaining as much as you can as you can of the black velvet to kind of just draw things out of the darkness. But sometimes you also need to cheat a little. It's not really cheating, it's creative uh, problem solving. It sure seems to be softening things up a little bit. You know, I'm always looking for ideas. I'm, I'm glad that Michael tagged me on uh, Twitter, on the Twitters. And said that he'd like to see this art in my style because I was just finishing up the last project that sexy space crocodile and I'm always looking for ideas you know weird things I like to do kind of the weird takes on mythology and horror and I'm always open to new ideas not to say that I'm accepting commissions because I'm really not but if something sounds interesting or fun or different or a medium that I would like to embarrass myself pl publicly with, yeah, I might just consider it. So don't be shy in reaching out to me. <clears throat> on my website at drinkthepaintwater.com or you can find me on all the social medias, usually at Brownkowski, it's B-R-A-U-N-C-O-W-S-K-I. Hit the links here wherever you're watching this video. And I'm feeling a little bit better about this thing now. Now that I've cheated and added in some black, I'm going to cheat even further and add in some white here in a hot second. I think up top I'm going to throw in some orange. Not really, you know, what I would consider a sky color, but it'll be a nice contrast to all these cool colors, all these light greens and blues and things that I have going on. If 
this sound is annoying you, I really apologize. Hit it with that canned air again. And we'll hold on, let's juice up the painter a little bit. Delicious. All right, so we did the light blue. I've got a somewhat limited palette here. Kind of what I ex uh, experienced with the same with those soft pastels is that there's not much mixing <laughs> uh, that can be done on velvet. Although these are definitely faring better than the uh, than the soft pastels did. Uh, someone suggested that I use oil pastels. It might have been my friend Kate Moneymaker who suggested that. It almost seems to me like I should break out my old ass oil paints. And I mean old. I've, oh shit. Look at that. I, <laughs> I believe I rubbed right through <laughs> the velvet and hit the uh, hit the layer underneath. Well, I promised that there would going to be extra corruption. And there certainly is. Now I believe what happened, what ha happened is um, the extra glue that I added the other day, I think it made the velvet wet and maybe it's just not, you know, I, I put it on there at, at least a day ago, maybe two days ago that this thing's been sitting and drying. But you know what, uh, I don't hate what's going on right now. It's uh, something to remember if I want to use these little self-adhesive velvet pads again, these velvet swatches, is to maybe not add that extra glue underneath. I was worried that the uh, regular adhesive wouldn't stick well enough, but I think it weakened the substrate a little bit. But I, I kind of don't hate the uh, damage that it's doing with this uh, particular subject matter. <laughs> All right. I'm going to take some of this hot, bright yellow and add it to these leaves down here. Some of this black coming in just to make this meander a little bit more. After we, we'll use some purple. Kind of hit these shaded areas a little bit, so it's not just black. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious to use this medium again, these self-adhesive panels, without that glue. And see if that does, how that works out for me. Try like a darker blue, some more, just kind of contrast in there. It's actually doing a little bit of blending for me.
Now I have a bucket of paint markers over here. Artistic Vista. I think in the past I've called these Posca paint markers, which I think is a better brand maybe than these. But let's see. Well, like, or here's a Sharpie one. That might be interesting. Shake it up. Sorry, I'll try to do that away from the microphone a little bit. We'll see. You know, I could maybe just ruin this whole thing. But there's one way to find out, right? I don't know. I'm kind of digging what's going on here. All right, and then I think and cheat some darker lines back in here again. That purple got a little over overwhelming, a little overzealous. But I do like it kind of as a little accent in there. Just a little vibrancy. I'm going to try. Peel this guy down a little bit. I want that to be kind of more of a solid layer, so I'm going to use the side of this crepe off. Kind of just make that smoother. Yeah, it worked out okay. Maybe I'll do the same with this guy. This is why I buy <laughs> cheap art materials. So I don't feel bad just walking up to it and smack it in the jaw. Snap it right back. Yeah, editing that gem tack yesterday was, or the other day, <laughs> was a choice. I don't know if it was a good choice, but it was a choice. Now one thing uh, he does have on this good old um, Matt Striker, what he does have is kind of dead trees hanging out here on the side. So maybe I'll add a little bit of that. Hopefully I don't mess this up too bad. When I did my initial sketch, it was kind of off-center. I'm sure you can see that a little bit too far to the right. So we'll just imply a not-so-happy little tree. Sorry, Bob Ross. Side here. Really crunch that one up pretty good. Kind of fill this out a little bit too. So you still get just that hint of brown coming through, but this evens it out a little bit. See if I can kind of get that same separation of these layers in back. How, how Matt has these rows of foliage just sort of shadowed upon each other in the back. Let's see if I can maybe pick some of that up with this blue. You know, folks, I think that might be it. I think that's as much damage as we can do to this poor thing. And there you have it. We're all done with this beautiful black velvet painting. I can't wait to get this over to uh, Nick, and he can do with it what he likes. All right, stick around for the next video. Right over here.